cross and make them unable to believe the truth. Spurgeon said, Christ did not redeem His church with His blood so the Pope could come in and steal away the glory. He never came from heaven to earth. He never poured out His very heart that He might purchase His people. That a poor sinner, a mere man, should be set upon high to be admired by all the nations and to call Himself God's representative on earth, Christ has always been the head of His church. Spurgeon knew what the Reformers knew, what any true student of Scripture knows, that the Pope stood at the top of an illegitimate system and particularly and specifically at the top of an illegitimate priesthood. And Spurgeon wrote this, when a fellow comes forward in all sorts of curious garments and says he's a priest, the poorest child of God may say, stand away and don't interfere with my office, I am a priest. I know not what you may be, you surely must be a priest of Baal. For the only mention of the word vestments in Scripture is in connection with the temple of Baal. The priesthood belongs to all the saints. They sometimes call you laity, but the Holy Ghost says of all the saints, you are God's kleros, you are God's clergy. Every child of God is a clergyman or a clergywoman. There are no priestly distinctions known in Scripture. Away with them, says Spurgeon, away with them forever. The prayer book says, then shall the priest say. What a pity that word was ever left there. The very word priest has such a smell of the sulfur of Rome about it that so long as it remains, the church of England will give forth an ill savor. Call yourself a priest, sir. I wonder men are not ashamed to take the title. When I collect what priests have done in all ages, what priests connected with the church of Rome have done, I repeat what I have often said, I would sooner a man pointed at me in the street and called me a devil than call me a priest. For bad as the devil has been, he has hardly been able to match the crimes and cruelties and villainies that have been transacted under the cover of a special priesthood. From that may we be delivered. But the priesthood of God's saints, the priesthood of holiness, which offers prayer and praise to God, this we have because Thou hast made us priests. That is what the saints are. The Roman Empire then is in the uh, view of these men of God through the ages a front line for Satan. And for Spurgeon, Rome was a deadly enemy, first of all, as well as a mission field. Spurgeon said we must have no truce and make no treaty with Rome. He said this, war, war to the knife with her, peace there cannot be, she cannot have peace with us, we cannot have peace with her, she hates the true church and we can only say that the hatred is reciprocated, we would not lay a hand upon her priests, we would not touch a hair of their heads, let them be free, but their doctrine we would destroy from the face of the earth as the doctrine of devils. So let it perish, O God, and let that evil thing become as the fat of lambs, into smoke let it consume, yea, into smoke let it consume. You could just hear him preaching that in the tabernacle in London. He went on to say, we must fight the Lord's battles against this giant error, whichever shape it takes, and so must we do with every error that pollutes the church. Slay it utterly. Let none escape. Fight the Lord's battles, even though it be an error that is in the evangelical church, yet we must smite it. We stand on those shoulders. What is our response to this current issue? A truce with Rome? Are we going to betray the martyrs? Are we going to betray the history of our faith? Are we going to betray those who lived and died to get us the truth? Are we going to betray the, the Tyndales and the Luthers and the Calvins and all the rest? Are we so senseless? Are we so blind? Are we so ignorant? Are we so faithless? Are we so cowardly that we will not fight? The doctrinal ignorance of the evangelical church is shocking, matched only by its cowardice, I fear. 
And that has certainly been revealed to everybody in the recent response to the death of the Pope and the installation of his successor. The promotion of Catholicism that we've seen in the media in the last couple of months has had no equal in history. This is the single greatest promotion of the Roman Catholic system in the history of that system. The world media has set aside the sickening pedophilia, the abuse issues, to parade the pomp and circumstance of this false system as if it were truly all-glorious. It is a classic illustration of the old story of the emperor's new clothes. Spiritually it's naked. And here we are at the very time when Roman Catholicism is receiving through the devil's medium, since he controls both, its greatest exposure. It is perpetrating on the world its greatest seduction. It is bringing to the world its damning delusion as never before. And Protestants and evangelical representatives are just embracing it and its damnable heresies. The media, have you noticed how uncritical they are? Have you noticed how they don't ever bring up the scandal of the priests? And we hear people say, well, Catholicism is a different denomination. Catholicism isn't a different denomination, it's a different religion. I don't think people know the difference between a denomination and a religion. Has Rome changed? No. Oh, Rome morphs. Rome is a chameleon. Whatever it needs to be in any nation, in any time, it will become. Whatever it takes. That's how the devil always works. He, he moves and changes to become whatever wins over people. But here is Protestant evangelicalism abandoning sound doctrine, shaming the name of Christ, and all in bold relief so the whole world can see. And the world was watching the death of uh, Pope John Paul II in an unrivaled spectacle of worship given to a man. And the question came up, is the Pope in heaven? And you hear all these people say, yes, yes, yes. People have asked me, is, is the Pope in heaven? And my answer is, is the Pope Catholic? <laughs> Isn't that the answer? I think He is. I think the Pope is Catholic. Does He believe Catholic theology? Yes. He is the guardian of Catholic theology. Do you get to heaven by works, by Mary, by penance, by baptism, by confession, by rosary? No. This is another gospel. This is not the true gospel. A couple of weeks ago, uh, two messages, we talked about the nature of saving faith. And we reminded you, salvation is by faith alone, not in Catholicism. It's by a combination of grace and faith and works. But we know what the New Testament teaches. No one, Romans 3.20 says, will be declared righteous in God's sight by observing the law. Romans 3.26, God justifies those who have faith in Jesus. Faith alone and Christ alone. Romans 3.28, we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from observing the law. Romans 4, Abraham was justified not by works. If he was justified by works, he had something to boast about. But